I have to admit the sun is a bit bright and harsh for photography today, but that makes me think, when are photographers ever happy with the conditions? Hello and welcome to the video. I'm sometimes asked by people who use their phones for photography what would be a good camera to move up from, from using their phones. And in truth, the easy answer would be just to go and buy the best camera that you can afford. But another easy answer would be to go and buy one of the entry-level cameras from any of the top brands. So, for instance, Canon, Nikon, Fujifilm, Sony, Olympus, Lumix, any of the main brands make absolutely excellent cameras and fantastic entry-level cameras. And in truth, there's very little between the brands, between the best and the worst. They're all just great cameras. So whichever one you buy, you can't go wrong. And my advice would be to go and buy an entry-level camera from one of those brands. One option a beginner photographer could have is to go out and buy a, a second-hand camera from eBay or Facebook Marketplace or any of the online sites and maybe save themselves a lot of money by getting one that's not brand new. As an example, I've got one such camera here. I've got the Canon 400D, which is an entry-level camera that was first sold in 2006. Now, you might think, 2006, that's 16 years old, that camera, that's way too old. Surely that's not going to be any good. But in truth, it's not a bad camera, and actually, it would make a fairly good beginner camera. And looking online, I've seen or found these cameras easily, read, easily available for as little as 50 bucks, pounds or euros. So wherever you are in the world, this would cost about 50 pounds with the lens. So you get the whole camera, a digital SLR with the lens for 50 pounds. Now, that would be an amazingly good option for you if you're a beginner because you might not like it. And in fact, many people who take up photography only last for a year or two and they give up and they put their camera in a drawer and they never see it again. So you could spend 50 pounds on a camera like this that's 10 to 15 years old, uh, use it, get amazing pictures and save yourself a fortune. I think that's a really good option. Being 16 years old, this camera is not going to be as flash as the modern cameras you buy today. In fact, this is only 10.1 megapixels. The other drawbacks you get with this camera, it's got a small battery, but it doesn't need a lot of power, but the battery is small. It doesn't have a flippy out screen or a screen that even moves. So you just look at what you can see, you can't move the screen. And lastly, it runs off a compact flash memory card, which of course these days, everything runs on SD card or SD2 these days. So compact flash is a bit old fashioned, but the, the fact is the pictures aren't that terribly big, so you don't need a lot of memory to use this camera. My intention today is to try and take a few photos with this camera and then show you exactly what you can do and the quality of the pictures that you could get if you owned a camera like this or, or one at similar age. Here's a shot right in front of me. You can see uh, these cows in front of this landscape and if I want to get down into the boggy parts, I could even get a picture with this, this small pond. But I'll take a picture of the cows with the landscape in the background and you can you know, see, get an idea of the quality that you can get from this camera. There's the first shot taken and I'll put that up on the screen now. The camera provides all the adjustments you could want from a camera for 90% of your camera needs. I've got it in manual mode. I've adjusted the ISO to 100. It goes up to ISO 1600. For, for, it, the ISO is from 100 to 1600. So you've got plenty of scope both for high bright daylight and evening shots. Admittedly, modern cameras go up to much more than 1600 but 1600 is a, a fair iso setting so i wouldn't say that's a problem i think it, for an entry level camera that would be perfect as you would expect from a, a digital camera you can adjust the white balance the metering 
uh, the exposure conversation, you can pretty much adjust all the settings that any photographer would want to use. And really that most of the time, or 90% of the time, the settings that you would adjust on any camera, on my camera I'm filming this video on, you can do on this entry level 16 year old camera and you will get really, really good results. This Canon 400D is well worth it. It comes with an 1855 kit lens and quite often you hear these photographers that sort of bulk at a kit lens and think oh a kit lens that's not very good but the truth is these camera manufacturers make absolutely excellent kit lenses that take amazing photographs they're not the super super expensive lenses you can buy but in truth if you're taking photos for instagram or for the internet or for home or for family do you really need the sharpest of sharpest lens that costs thousands of pounds or is a kit lens good enough? For me personally, I think a kit lens is perfectly adequate for 99% of the needs of most photographers. So I would say this kit lens is, is pretty amazing and it would be worth buying. The nice thing about this location, I'm in the Lincolnshire Wolds, there's pretty much a photograph at every turn and the cows are still in the field, I can still see them roaming around and I'm just going to take this picture and I'll show you what this picture looks like. It's just a picture of cows in a field but it's a pretty scene so let me know what you think in the comments. There's some pheasants in the road and I don't think they've spotted me, they probably think I'm a cow or something and they're just meandering up and down the road. Thanks very much for watching. I, I really hope you found this video useful and informative, and I hope it gives you the confidence to go out and possibly buy a not new camera, a not even old camera, a very old camera, because this camera and cameras just like this are, even though they're 15 years old, they're still, they're still very much a viable camera and you can still get really excellent shots. I suppose you can be the judge of that and you can see the shots that I've taken with this camera, this 15, 16 year old camera, and you can sort of be the judge on whether it does take good photos and whether it would be a useful tool for you and whether you could upgrade from using your phone to a, a digital SLR or even a mirrorless camera. Either way, it doesn't matter. They're both just as good as each other. As I said, it, equally, it doesn't matter what camera brand you buy, whether it's Canon, Nikon, Sony, Fuji film, etc. They're all exceptionally good cameras and with them all you will get exceptionally good results no matter what brand you buy. Be aware when you buy your first DSLR or mirrorless camera, you tend to get possessive of the brand that you've bought. So for instance, a Canon user will swear by Canon and maybe even suggest that nothing else is good enough. And it's the same with all of the camera brands and all of the people that use them. It's a bit like you have in your car. Whatever car you have, for you it's a great car and it fits you like a glove. And it's the same with cameras. So the good thing is, once you buy into a camera, even if you buy a 16 year old camera, you, you're, you've bought into a brand, then you can buy more lenses and potentially more bodies and you'll be on the Canon path if you buy a Canon or you'd be on the Sony path or Olympus or whatever it is that you buy. So it's worth bearing that in mind when you choose your camera, which one you go to buy, because once you've bought your camera, you tend to stick with that brand. What I'll do is I'll put all the specs of this camera at the end of the video so you can have a look. It's an APS-C sensor. It's not full frame, but it's not micro four thirds, which is the size sensor that I shoot on. But it, either way, full frame, APS-C, Micro Four Thirds, whatever, they're all excellent sensors that will provide an excellent image uh, for you. So whatever it is you do, fantastic, go for it. My advice would be buy the camera, buy the one that you can afford and, and just enjoy taking photographs. And thanks very much for watching. I really appreciate that you've got this far. If you found this video helpful and informative and you've liked it, I'd be really pleased if you'd give it a like. Uh, and even better if you'd subscribe to the channel. The more subscribers and the likes, the more this channel gets noticed and the more people sees these, these videos and potentially our challenge videos. So uh, thank you very much indeed and good luck with your photography.